obviously just like I did with the bow um, cutting off all the extra stuff I want to do the same thing with the stern pretty close we'll do some final shaping further you could even get a piece of foam and stick it on the back to make this flat so when you put your fabric on it doesn't have this kind of look like the edge of a Lego or something something like something you build out of a whole bunch of Lego um, but it's entirely up to you I usually just leave it the way it is maybe take the power plane to smooth it off a little and that's about it now we're gonna get into one of the bigger pieces the first piece of foam we ever cut off when we were making the bottom blank for the kayak and we're going to now use that for our decks in particular stern deck the bow deck looks like we're going to have to piece together a little bit but the stern deck we know where we want that to be we have this mark right here on the floor set that up and my square just happens to perfectly fall and then I just kind of looking at it from this side down angle like here I'm trying to line up just like that so that this going across covers up that line and I know that when it's touching this point it's just on on the line right there you can see that through there and that tells me how far the deck needs to come up on these rails So now that I've got that marked, take the first big piece we cut off we said before and line it up. And <laughs> this is going to work out perfectly. Sometimes they even have to piece the stern deck. I don't think we have, oh, see, we, we might have enough. We do. We do it sideways. That's even better. So taking it. So this corner is lined up here, that lined up right there. This is where we want our stern net to be. And of course, pin it with a skewer. So that we know it's not going anywhere while we're working on it. And once again, scribe where are you going to cut this? Like that. Ooh. A little bit of an overlap on the stern, which is never a bad thing. Scribe this outside as well. And now I have the shape of my stern deck. I'm just going to flip it over and cut it out. So you can see my scribe lines. This is the kind of cuts where this is faster than setting up for your saber saw. There we go. Our stern deck. The only thing I have left to do now is go ahead and score up both surfaces and our hatch hole will be cut right here. I'll find some waste to make the uh, bulkhead. That's the next step that comes after this. Okay, for your aft bulkhead, first thing you have to do is you have to know how big of a piece do I need to make the bulkhead. So we're going to measure the marks I made in the rail. Measuring across, we come out to 20 and a half inches 
across here. And then our depth, of course it's four pieces of foam tall, so that's eight inches tall. Go and get our waist and I measure 20 and a half and mark it right there. Then I'm gonna see do I have eight inches? <laughs> I just have eight inches. So this worked out perfectly. You can't always count on it working this way, in which case you can remember that this is a tapered piece and the hull is going to be coming inward. So you can fool around with angles and whatever to, to make sure that your top is the right size. Of course, the bottom is going to taper in. So if I went from the other side and had the narrower part down here where it isn't quite 20 and a half to make it to eight, it would have worked. It all takes a little figuring and whatever. This is just so I don't have to go out and buy another piece of foam. Um, now, someone like me who has built a lot of these, I have all kinds of scraps and I can just keep doing this. I'm trying to see how much of the boat I can make out of just these two pieces without anything else. So that's what's going on here. Um, so, my 8 inch. Make a nice straight line to know how to cut. comes from the other waist piece that was on this side of the bottom blank. Now this is where it's a little tricky. I tried to describe it with words and of course that was next to impossible. So we're going to make a video of how to fit your bulkheads into the hull. Step of making the, the step making the bulkheads you're going to be using your sure form or your Harbor Freight knockoff from Central Forge and just wanted to talk about it a little bit. I always thought these were identical. It turns out the actual uh, the part that cuts the foam here is made differently. Like this one has teeth along the edge. This one does not. They're actually different lengths, even though I could swear that I bought one for an actual sure form made by Stanley and put it on one of these, but I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Um, I do have a spare one anyways. Um, and the big thing is the sure form, the handle is the way it is. There's no changing it. Um, it's a little bit more lower profile, obviously, if you're looking at it. This one is definitely set up for you to be able to put more force into it. But the real reason they do that, see the sure form, it's there. <clears throat> the central forge one, which is cheaper and does the same thing, you re remove this screw and you flip the handle around and now you have much more like a regular bench plane. Um, I think it's much more useful. I like to use, especially on the inside of the hull, over here, use it this way. I usually hold it backwards and actually lean my elbow against this part. Hold it like that and use that to scrape the inside of the hole down. But as I said, on this step, you are going to need these. Um, and you'll see why. Okay, so beginning the first part, we have our bulkhead lined up the way where the end of the deck is going to be, which is... I made a mark on both sides of the hull here. And with this centered in between, if you look at it in the back, you can see how much it tapers inwards right there. So the trick is, take your drywall saw and measure how that all the way across so that you're catching at the front of the hole and the back. So you can see right here it's making an angled an angled cut right there going across. Um, so that way we know the angle that the hull is that we're trying to match. Now the next thing is set your foam down inside and make a line across like that. And then we need to take this corner off, cutting it 
on the angle. Like that. So the boom, now we've made an angle. And then you're going to do the same thing over here on the other side. So now that I've cut both sides, I can set it down at the hull. Obviously, I didn't quite get it right. Um, but it's not the end of the world because now I got a measure, I got to do mark for the next level. So, same thing again. Do it from the front. and the back so that you have a notch on both sides and the same thing over here on this side and on the front face and <clears throat> now you're going to take and set this down like that obviously the whole taper so you can go forward again and once again you're going to make a height mark on your bulkhead measured up with the top rail of the, of the side of the boat and now you know the next thing to cut to and now as you see with this one I've cut down to the level of the height mark chiseled that off. Now this is the mark of the next layer down, I believe, but we'll have to check that again. Um, but yeah, we want to make this cut on here. And then once again, that height mark that we made right there. Do the same thing on the other side. As you can see, looking from the front, this is starting to fit in there. However, if we come back here and look at our line, we're way off. So this is where, as I said, the sure form comes in because you're going to use this sure firm form to get things to fit where they're supposed to be. And we're close. We're actually almost lined up there but now once again we have to go down to the next level so we're going to do the same thing we've done before and find the angle on the front just like this for our next layer and then on the back doing the same thing again that will show us the angle to cut it to. Do this on both sides. And any fine tuning that you need to do, you do with the sure form because you can push the foam around a lot easier and carve away just a little bit at a time than you can with the saw. So now if you're looking at it, you see this is the mark I made from one side, this is the mark I made from the other side. Same thing on this end, mark and a mark. And I'm just simply going to take the saw, lay it across the two marks, like so, and cut down to the next level. I want to make sure there's a nice starter mark on each one of these levels, and then cut across like that. Then we had the starter mark that I just made. And we're going to cut in again this way. Now we have another starter mark here. But this one I didn't get my depth yet, so I need to go back and get that. And same thing on this side. We got our top level. Depth line, there's our starter mark. Depth line, starter mark, once again. But 
we need to find these out. Yeah, you will make a little bit of a mess with this, this step. But as we can now see, it's starting to fit in there. And this does not have to be a precision fit. We're not going for water tightness. Our fabric is our water tightness. <clears throat> We're just looking to make sure, really, that this bulkhead is going to be braced against either side from crushing because this deck and this bulkhead make the end of the kayak strong. Um, you're making a triangle. And as you know anything about geometry, if you know anything about design, you know that a triangle is the strongest shape. Okay, so here's my height line again. Same thing on this side. And as you can see, we're getting down to towards the bottom. Now obviously, this is not fitting in right. If you look at our alignment mark here for where the this side of this bulkhead is supposed to be here, and obviously it's way over there. So this is going to take a little bit of work with the sure form to move it back to where we want but that's that's the final part of doing this stuff right now we're doing the preliminary stuff that has to be done so once again i'm going to get my forward and back angle for this level right here right here and this side it's almost there this one not quite so much I've got my height lines on both sides correct. Okay. And then we'll just do once again, cutting the way I did the last couple of times. So now it's sitting on the bottom of the boat, more or less, but it's not back where I want it. Obviously, I'm going to have to angle this part right here and that part right there to fit in because the hull is tapering in like this on both sides. And some of these other ones, the front can look okay, the back is not. And this is where you're going to take your sure form, and it's just a whole lot of picking it up, doing a couple strokes, putting it back in, seeing how it, it lines up and, and fits in there, <clears throat> until you have a fit that you're satisfied with. And once again, I said, it doesn't have to be watertight. In fact, I have plenty of these boats where I've taken one of these little scraps that I've cut out, and went, hmm, I think I'll fill that little gap in and glue that in place. And that's perfectly fine. Because once it's glued, it's a solid block. And really, this is just to add strength to the end of the boats. Um, it also reinforces the cockpit rails. Because this is the part that the, the wooden rails anchor into is these end pieces. Which is why I think they're important. I've never built one without it. And I'm not sure how strong it would be. Especially if you're banging into stuff, dropping it. Um, pounding into waves, whatever. I think this is the best, and I don't think you're going to find any better use of the end spaces. Um, I know I've seen canoes where they stick like their foam blocks for flotation in the ends. Then they come up with a later design, and they get rid of them, and the end of the canoe just is open, and they put the foam somewhere else on the hull. And it doesn't look like anything, but if you think about stuffing gear into the very ends of the boat, you, you, you got to have soft, smushy stuff to get in there, and it, it's just not useful. Whereas with this, you have a hatch, it's sealed, it's like a cooler, and you can just throw things in there, keep them out of the sun, they won't fall out of the boat, even if it gets flipped over. Um, stuff you want to keep in there, even when you're putting it on top of the car and back off, won't get lost. It, I think it's just better all around. I like also having it a place to put my keys and my wallet. Things I don't want in getting dunked. I might put them inside of like a peanut butter jar or something like that. Um, because I know that's going to keep the air out, but or the water out. But inside of that box, even if I, the canoe gets dumped and I go over a waterfall, they're still going to be there in the boat. And they're not going to get washed downstream and be lost forever or get soaked or anything else. So that's what we want. So now I'll just show you how we're going with the, uh, the shore form filing um, take the shore form and happen to know here for sure that that rail is 
set it up one like that, and then mark the angle on the back, which I kind of have. So now, back down again, and this is the last time we'll do the height mark, like that. So now I'm going to take my sure form, and I know on the front, I actually want that dimension right there. But on the back, I want that dimension. So this is where I use my sure form. And so it's just a lot of in and out, seeing how it fits, realizing we got to go back more. <clears throat> so, file this. That's going to be the one that was holding me up. Got a little more. Missing big time up here. It's really there, but it's not anywhere near my mark here. No, I could be actually. I could live with that. I would simply probably take one of these, as I said before, these blocks of foam and shove it in there to make up for that gap at the top. Now I've got to get the other side back to the line as well. But it's just a bunch of fitting and filing, and um, once you kind of get the shape, then you're just working it in tight as tight as you want to go so I got it to fit in it, the gaps aren't all hundred percent perfect but they're touching at almost every level when this is glued and I put a clamp on while it's gluing this will come out tight or tape or whatever I decide to do um, so the next thing to do after this of course is to cut that odd piece off the top that I don't need straight edge, lay it across your rails, try and follow your straight edge, like I just did, and there you go, your aft bulkhead, so cut that, and then we'll glue that and the deck on, <clears throat> that right there is what the stern box, the stern compartment, is going to look like. It's all put together. The next step is simply to glue it, which will mean pinning it in place with skewers, uh, some bricks, probably around these edges, <clears throat> and just simply glue. So in gluing this one, if you remember, mostly anything that was touching was on this front edge. So. When I do the glue, I'm just going to glue that front edge. No use putting glue where it's not going to stick to anything. I mean, it does foam up and sometimes touch other parts, which is why I'm doing it on each one of those angles where it matches up with a rib. But in reality, that's what I need. And then across the bottom, this is the one that is going to touch the bottom of the hull as it's pressed together by bricks so this one gets the normal amount like we use with ribs and then the same thing down this side and there we go 
whole reason we're going to do skewers is because now with the glue on this, this slides around easily. There's no longer that friction that there was. And when I squeeze this, this will bloop, just like a cork, and try and pop out. So now I have to run a couple skewers in. Anchor this bulkhead in place so it doesn't try and squeeze out or go somewhere else under pressure. And these actually give a little bit of support to the boat as well. A little bit more strength. I don't know how critical it could be or anything, but it obviously doesn't hurt anything. The more of them you do, the stronger it might be. I don't know. But it doesn't hurt anything. So you'll notice when you're doing this with Gorilla Glue, sometimes the stream does funny things and goes off to the side. And you're like, what is that? That's static electricity. Static electricity builds up all over the foam in weird patterns. And that's why your glue stream goes sideways when you're trying to make your loops and it does funny things, even though you're like, I, I thought I was going to go some other way. The way you can tell that is look at the little crumbles of foam that are around when you're laying the glue. Just as the glue gets to them, quite often they'll dodge to the side or do something else weird. And the whole reason for that is because they, there's an interaction. The Gorilla Glue and the foam actually both have static charges on them and they're reacting to each other. Just interesting little side note. At least if you're like me and you're in a nice dry place in the winter time. Probably if this is a humid basement. The humidity is normally pretty dry in this area. Even when it's not, it still acts that way. So now we have the deck. And place that on. I know some people probably have the idea, well, what if I just want to have a sealed compartment? Nothing wrong with that, but I know with my dad's kayak, actually, that's what he decided to do with the stern of the boat. It was a compartment right behind the, the uh, cockpit. But the rest of it, he just said, nah, make it off limits, uh, make it closed off, I really don't care. And, oh, I didn't get my... There we go. Much better. What's that covering all the way? Still. In. These skewers are very effective. That's one of the pick that tip up from somebody else, but one of those things you just can't do wrong. They're so easy to work with. Right here, I'm actually using them as the clamps to hold the hull together. So we get that pin the way we want, and our gravity clamps installed. I like to call my bricks that just because that's what they use. They use gravity. Gravity always works. It has never failed. It's free. All you need is a little bit of mass, and whatever you're trying to get gravity to work on will work. I use bricks, paint cans, books. Rocks, uh, I've used rocks before. I haven't used much else in the way of weights, but I've seen people sending me pictures of them building, and they have they have all kinds of things. I've seen people with stacks of books. I've seen people with uh, collections of paint cans. Uh, I think somebody had jars of something, like a canning jars. Um, whatever you have, as long as it's not going to ruin the foam or dent it in, you know, sometimes you will end up with little bits of, the brick glued to the boat and you have to rip it off so you get some foam stuck to it. If you don't mind that, that works. Anything heavy will work.